Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Dragon Man 44. You ever wonder why your um, pilot light keeps going out on your water heater? This morning, I'm down at my uh, my lady friend Sandy's house, and I had to pull out the burner because she's got a defective thermocouple. I don't know if y'all even want to know how a um, how a, uh, a gas valve and a gas appliance operates. This in here in particular has been LP, but it doesn't matter. Natural gas LP, either one. And these are somewhat changed compared to uh, back in the day. I've worked on hundreds and hundreds and installed many, many, many of them back in the day. But these new ones now have a piezo electronic ignition, you know, a little push button ignition, not electronic, but a piezo coil, just like a barbecue pit. I'm kind of um, a little bit behind the, behind the loop on that one there. But uh, it still has the same thermocouple. Now, the thermocouple is a little thing that actually inserts itself into the pilot flame. And the thermocouple is made of dissimilar metals, the properties of which are such that whenever that junction of material or those two metals are uh, heated, they generate a millivoltage of electricity. Okay, follows along this here. There's an insulated pair of conductors that goes up and screws into the bottom of the gas valve. And there's a safety coil inside there that holds the pilot valve open that matches the millivoltage output of the thermocouple. Once the thermocouple begins uh, deteriorating on the tip or burning off somewhat, uh, its ability to generate that minimum amount of millivoltage, that's again a millivoltage which is less than one volt, but its capacity to generate that develop, uh, develop that minimum millivoltage goes down. When it goes down below the coil rating, it drops the pilot light out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and change this thermocouple and put it back in service. One of the things that's a little bit different than what I'm used to is this is a sealed combustion compartment. And so the thermocouple and the pilot tube and also the piezo wire and the main gas line have to go through rubber grommets. So to ease tearing that out, I just cut the thermocouple off and we will slip it right out of this perch right here, this mount. It slides right up through there and there's a little retaining clip that holds it into place. So I'm just gonna slide that out, slide the new one in and then try to force it through this rubber grommet. I'll probably slide it in from the outside uh, because that would be the uh, the smallest dimension. And I may have to lubricate that just a little bit with a little bit of dishwasher soap. A, a quick trip right inside her downstairs bathroom and added me a little bit of liquid soap. I just put a little bit of liquid soap on the thermocouple and slid the small tip right through. And now you can see I'm ready to pop it right into that retaining clip right there. Once it's in all the way to the hilt on that retaining clip, the tip of the thermocouple or somewhat down from the tip of the thermocouple, thermocouple will be uh, introduced to the pilot flame and this one should start generating the electricity required to hold in that safety coil. Now that it's adequately installed with the uh, clip holding it in place, you can see its position is right there in line with the pilot, uh, the pilot light. So the pilot light's going to burn on it correctly. We've got the uh, retaining clip holding all the components up against the main gas tube. And we're going to go ahead and reassemble the whole thing, tighten everything back up, and then connect up the, uh, the new thermocouple. Point to notice on these new ones, there's left-handed threads on this main gas control coming out. Uh, the old ones were not left-handed threads. Um, so that's just a point to beware. And this whole assembly has got to be physically removed. In the old days, you did not have to remove the entire assembly. You could, uh, you could with a little creativity, change the thermocouple right through that opening. But this new one is entirely different than what the old ones were. Now, fortunately, some things haven't changed. You still need a 7 16 inch wrench for the uh, brass fitting on the pilot tube. You need a 3 quarter inch wrench for the uh, main gas uh, main gas line going down to the burner. And you still need a 3 8 wrench for the disconnection and reassembly of the, uh, of the thermocouple into this other partition over here, or this other portion over here. That safety coil is up with inside that portion of the gas valve. One thing I would suggest, though, this is definitely a left-handed thread. It's not a right-handed thread like the old days. And because of the confines, how tight everything is, once you remove that, I would highly suggest uh, using a, a, um, a line wrench. And even a line wrench like this, that will flex, a flex head line wrench, so that it'll allow you to go past this knob down here. Um, and you can tell that this is a left-handed thread because of the coloration on this. Um, some of your actual gas fittings will have a line grooved in each one of the, the, the sides of the hex nut. And that'll tell you that the flare nut there, that particular fitting is, um, is left-handed threads. This one, the coloration will tell you. There we go, flick, quick flick of the button, pilot light ignited, flip up to the uh, desired temperature setting, flip the gas valve to the on position, and we are back in business. 
everything looking fine, so she'll uh, she'll have some nice hot water this evening. So at any rate, quick, fun, short little video, just helping out a neighbor lady. One thing I need to point out, if you notice, I brought a selection of, of various thermocouples. I brought down a, a sub, couple of Slim Jims and a Fat Boy and a couple of Universals. Uh, if you notice, there's various links on a 24 inch, 30 inch, 36 inch, whatever. Uh, the length of the thermocouple does not matter. Water heaters typically have an 18 inch thermocouple, but you can use any one of these and just coil up the excess and leave it, uh, leave it in place. As a matter of fact, the one I used was a 24 inch, and so I just left the excess coil right up underneath the gas valve because I did not want to uh, make it too tight underneath the, uh, underneath the cover. You always have to have your tool pouch ready to go whenever the phone rings, you know what I mean? Things change with a phone call. How many times you heard me say that? Well, there you have it. Another, uh, another quick and simple service call taken care of, you know. Got the gal some heat. You know, everybody's happy. I just got to pick up my tools, wipe down all my uh, tools with the, uh, I guess, disinfectant wipes, and uh, put my COVID-19 mask back on and get out of here. This is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here for sure.